You know what I really love from 2005's Battlefront 2? That one multiplayer mode where you had to capture multiple command posts in order to win the game. It sure would really be cool if they could add a classic mode from Battlefront 2 onto Battlefront 2 from 2017. Oh look at that, one update later and that's exactly what EA did with Battlefront 2 in 2017. You know what other multiplayer mode I really enjoyed from 2005's Battlefront 2? That one mode where you had a giant capital ship and two supporting crafts and your goal was to take down the two supporting crafts and then cripple multiple systems in the main capital ship. You know, since it's going to be a while before we get a sequel to Jedi Fallen Order, it would actually make a lot of sense for EA to update Battlefront 2 to include this game mode from the classic Battlefront 2. There's certainly no way they can build an entire game around this single game mode, right? Star Wars Squadrons released on October 2nd to all systems on Xbox, PlayStation, and Steam. And I'm going to be honest, it's pretty lame. Uh, that's not even like, I don't even have any other words to describe it. When I started to play the game, I felt nothing but utter disappointment. It's pretty, and it is super fun, and I'll start with a pro right off the bat. I love that you can only play in first person. The only version of the game that you can play is from inside the cockpit. But aside from that and the fact that you can now drift a starfighter, there's really not a lot to love in this game. And I'm going to be breaking down the game into multiple categories, including campaign, multiplayer, among several others that are simply relevant to the game itself. Let's get started. The Empire chose to destroy Alderaan in order to spread fear and douse the fires of rebellion. Star Wars Squadron's campaign is so by the books that it's almost insulting to the typical Star Wars viewer. We are not in the first act of the game, but in the opening prologue introduced to a traitor to the Empire. And it's played as though as its big revealing moment, even though there's absolutely no character buildup for this one person, Lyndon Javes. It's simply thrown on us and we're expected to care. In fact, Lyndon Javes only acts as an expository device for the rest of the video game. When he dies, supposedly, it really can't be a big deal to anybody because nobody actually got any time to know him. All we know was he was an Imperial pilot, and then he turned to the rebellion to save some civilians. And by the way, this campaign is about six to eight hours depending upon how aggressively you play, but even that isn't true as the game is really only three to four hours split into two parts as you play one part rebellion or really new republic and one part galactic remnant. It's interesting to see both of these sides at this point in the galaxy, but we've already seen it with Battlefront 2's campaign, which again, was done better. And I didn't like Battlefront 2's campaign. When it comes to making a campaign for a story in a video game, you have two options. You have a story-driven campaign in which you essentially play a character, and that character will develop as it goes. Think of Cal Kestis from Jedi Fallen Order. We don't determine what his character is, we don't determine his backstory, we simply play through it. And that's something which this game does not have. Your second option is an RPG in which you are your character. Think games like Skyrim, where the decisions you make are entirely your own. The game does not make any decisions for you. You pick your dialogue, you pick who you help, you pick how much empathy you want to show towards other people. These are the two different ways in which a campaign for a video game, a single player video game that is, can unfold. The problem with Star Wars Squadrons is it is neither of these. In Star Wars Squadron, you do not make any choices whatsoever, aside from in the last mission when you get to choose which kind of starfighter you use and the loadouts of each starfighter that you use throughout the game. However, there is no actual actual choices you make. So you might be thinking this is a character driven story, much like Jedi Fallen Order. However, you would be incorrect, as there is absolutely no characterization given to the pilots that you fly. Their names are randomly generated, and honestly, there's nothing else to know about it besides just that. You pick their gender, their skin color, you pick their voice, but their dialogue options is just a handful of selected predetermined lines which you choose at the beginning of the game. And the squad mates that you meet are actually incredibly interesting, or at least they have the potential to be interesting. However, the game devotes almost no time whatsoever to characterizing them and humanizing them. We see some very interesting characters like an Imperial pilot who doesn't take his helmet off because he's been in too many wrecks. We see a girl who has the potential to be force sensitive. There's a Trandoshan who has a gambling problem. Throughout the game, they introduce tiny little bits of dialogue that give you almost the idea that they're attempting to characterize these individuals. However, they just cut right away for pretty much typical shoot-em-up arcade modes. 
Lyndon Javes, which to this point is the only character whose name I can remember from the entire campaign, is just that. He's Lyndon Javes. He's the expositional person in the entire video game. Again, as I've said before, his sacrifice is seen as meaningless, as just about everyone expected him to come back after his supposed death. It wasn't a surprise. It wasn't entertaining. It wasn't enthralling. This campaign left a lot to be desired. And there's almost no point in doing anything. You can customize your character at the beginning of the campaign, but then for what? You never even see your character. The second Death Star is gone. But the Imperial Fleet is still a threat. The multiplayer for Star Wars Squadrons is entertaining. It's just very limited. You have Dogfight, and then you have the one version of the game from Battlefront 2005. It's entertaining and it's fun to see this mode of the game with new 2020 graphics. However, taking one mode from a 15-year-old Star Wars game, updating its graphics, and then trying to build an entire video game out of what just one multiplayer mode in a game which had multiple is, is really disappointing. Again, I understand that this game is $40 and it is not $60, but I expect two-thirds of a full $60 game if I'm paying $40. The matchmaking in the game is all also terrible. I played several matches, in which case I alternated between getting shot by people who had played the game continuously since launch and those who had just wandered into their first multiplayer match. Again, the graphics are incredible and it does look quite nice. However, this is essentially Battlefront 2015, but it's just in space instead of on the ground. I would have really appreciated some low atmosphere kind of combat, something which we saw in some of the trailers, I might add. There was a lot of dog fighting in between wreckage, and that is entertaining and fun, especially to show off some of your piloting skills when evading missiles or fighters chasing behind you, so that is a positive thing I can say. However, after playing a few matches, you do get bored quite quickly. However, I will say one incredibly positive thing is that the game automatically turns on chatting, which is good because I hate typing in boxes. I would prefer to just talk to people, and I already have had several funny interactions with random people. But again, just because the game does its one thing good doesn't mean it's good. It's still lackluster and doesn't have much content in it. This is it, Titan Squadron. Everything we've done has led to this. Finish those bad guards scum! The controls for this game were perhaps the most infuriating part of the game for me, as you can't change them. I have no idea how to change them. Every single time I get a brand new game, I always change the keys because I play on the computer. And a lot of this criticism might come from the fact that I was playing on computer instead of console. I genuinely believe that it would probably be a better experience on some form of console. But you can't change the keys. You can change the sensitivity of your mouse, but you can't actually change how any of the keys works, which is incredibly infuriating since I was able to do that in both Battlefront 2 and in Jedi Fallen Order. And piloting the ship is something which is interesting. Again, I've mentioned before that I enjoy the fact that it's only first person really makes you feel like you're actually piloting a ship instead of just, you know, floating behind a ship that's flying. But the controls in the game, if you move your mouse anywhere from exactly dead center, your ship is going to veer off into whatever direction you accidentally hit your mouse. Drifting is fun, but that's just about the only cool thing about actually flying. Other than that, you either have incredibly slow turns or really rapid and jarring movement, especially after you come out of a maneuver and you're trying to focus on someone. This is gonna be close! graphics in the game are decent and quite beautiful in certain parts. There's a lot of great wallpaper opportunities in this game, except there's a few times whenever cutscenes just won't work. There's a lot of bugs that just I discovered in this game, and if you search around online, I'm sure you're going to find quite a few more. Whether you're clipping through Star Destroyers, the cutscene ends and the screen just goes black, and then it says you died. That actually happened to me at the end of the prologue, where I finished, the cutscene played, and then it said, congratulations, you're done, continue, and the screen went black, and then I hear an explosion. It says that I died, and that I had to restart from a checkpoint, only to then take me to the very next level. I don't understand why the game does this, and why it can't seem to run smoothly like it should. However, this is something that I figured was worth pointing out. There was also issues with the game's dialogue not matching up with the movement of the characters, and I recognize that a lot of people might say that my PC might just be a little bit aged, and I need to update something. Some of the graphics. However, if my PC can run Doom Eternal, I'm fairly certain that it can run Star Wars Squadrons. 
So if somehow Star Wars Squadrons takes up more processing power than Doom Eternal, that is impressive and terrifying. There are also several moments where you can uh, walk around, not really walk around, but look around the hangar and in the briefing room and you can talk to certain people. Or by talk to them, I mean they just simply talk to you while you stand there quite awkwardly. And every single time I went into this chat, uh, I would notice that there would be no dialogue whatsoever but the people would be moving as if they were talking. 15 to 20 seconds later, and suddenly I would hear dialogue again, only for the character to walk away as the dialogue continued. I checked on YouTube to see if there were any clips of other people coming into this sort of problem to find out that it was not only common, but seemed to be persistent in every version of the game that I looked at. Also, just a side point and what I would consider likely just laziness is that every character that you talk to has just about the same 15 second cycle of motions that they go through with their hands, where they'll cross their arms, they'll play with their gloves, they'll swing their arms by their side, and they'll repeat that about five times while they're talking to you. And there is absolutely no variation in it whatsoever. The game felt to me as though it had more bugs than a newly released Bethesda game, and that is saying a lot. If you're not just listening to this and you're looking at the screen right now, what you're seeing is a CG short film released by Star Wars and EA. This seven minute video was meant to hype up the game and it really did. I watched this and this is exactly what I thought the game would be. If you imagine fighting and playing like this, pitched battles like this, you can imagine how many people would see this and think that the game would feature several capital ships, dozens of fighters in the air, and it would be this surreal experience. However, the game was nothing like it was advertised. I want every one of you who hasn't played the game, if it's within your ability, go play the game. I want you to play the game and then I want you to come back here and watch the trailers. Go to YouTube, watch any of the trailers that you want. Now can you honestly tell me that the two, the game and the trailer, look the same? The trailers made you believe that you would be getting into a massive pitch battle experience where you would be flying TIE Fighters, you would be flying X-Wings, you could fly any craft that you wanted. But when it came down to it, the campaign was really just a disappointing shoot 'em up. I can't wait to tear through TIE Fighters as an X-Wing, only to then tear through X-Wings as a TIE Fighter with zero difficulty whatsoever. Changing the difficulty makes minimal change to this. I promise I have tried. Do you remember Wedge Antilles from the trailer, that one shot where he's flying the X-Wing beside you? That never shows up in the video game whatsoever. He's in one scene. He talks to your group one time, and then you never see him for the rest of the game. I don't mean he's off somewhere. I mean he just disappears. This video game featured blatant false advertising, making this $40 video game look and sound like it was really worth $60, and we were getting a good deal for only paying $40 for it. In the end, when I pay $40 for a video game, I expect to get two-thirds of a $60 game, meaning I expect to get two-thirds of Battlefront 2. And I certainly did not get two-thirds of Battlefront 2. If I were to take the lazy campaign out of Star Wars Squadrons, what you are left with is ultimately a 99-cent mobile game. Ultimately, this game disappointed me in just about every way that you can. The multiplayer was lackluster, the campaign was almost non-existent and boring to get through, the graphics were decent, but the bugs were too many to count and too frequent to ignore. The additions to the canon were non-existent, all the events that we see we already pretty much knew, we knew that the Starhawk was a thing, we knew that they were capturing Imperial Star Destroyers to get the Starhawk, this wasn't exactly new information that we were all yearning to have. The easter eggs, while numerous and enjoyable, only served to bandage up this poorly made campaign in an excuse of a story. If you would like a Star Wars game with better multiplayer and a better campaign, you are better off just buying Battlefront 2 if you don't have it already. The game is miles above Star Wars Squadrons. Star Wars Squadrons seeks to charge you at least double what it is actually worth. If you want a story-driven video game, you're better off buying Jedi Fallen Order. Both Jedi Fallen Order and Star Wars Battlefront are so much better than Star Wars Squadrons. Hopefully the game will get additional multiplayer modes, along with perhaps an extension to the campaign in future DLCs and updates. However, I'm really not holding out hope that they're going to put that much effort into a $40 video game. But what are your guys' thoughts? Do you want to see more of Star Wars Squadrons, and would you like to see an extended campaign, or perhaps even more modes added to the multiplayer? Comment below, leave me your thoughts. Thanks for watching, and as always... I'll see you again next time.